All right, that scene was cute, but I'd be waiting for something more, you know what I mean? It's been 55 weeks and we've only just come across an embrace. Like, she te- like, okay, so we tease him a lot, but that's it. That's it. Ugh. Okay. Let's see what we need. <gasps> we need... We need a lot of things for the last day. Uh. Okay. The door shuts behind me. I emerge from my room to see Saren waiting for me a few steps away. Ooh, look at that scar. Dressed in impeccable attire befitting his station as the crown prince, he looks calm and composed once again, ready to take on the world without getting a single feather ruffled. It's almost as if all that transpired yesterday is nothing but a dream, a nightmare we could not escape from. Good morning, Saren. Good morning, Valky. How are you? I'm doing better after last night's rest. After a night's rest. As for you? I am fine as well. He falls quiet, but he remains in place instead of taking his leave. I cock my head at him with a questioning look. He pauses for another heartbeat before finally speaking. I visited Quill this morning. I stiffen, sadness crashing over me again at the reminder of the child. My eyes flutter shut as I suck in a, sh a shaky breath. I only allow myself to speak when I'm certain I can without my voice breaking. How is he? He is coping well. I think he has come to terms with his fate. I told him that Nerefiel had found and rescued his sister after we extricated her location from the slave trader. And that piece of knowledge helped him find peace. I'm glad. Glad is not quite the right word, but I don't think I can find an appropriate adjective to describe my conflicted emotions. How could I be glad about the impending execution of this child? Whose entire life has been nothing but tragedy, his bright future snatched away from him due to the cruelty of fate. I wish it did not have to come to this. Yet, I have to accept the fact that I, and even Saren, have limited power to change circumstances. At least, Neri managed to help Quill find some peace. Wait, Neri? I beg your pardon? That's it. There is one person left who can save Quill. I'm sure he would accept to do so too. What I am unsure about is whether the stationed garrison soldiers will accept it. However, it is worth a shot. My eyes sparkle and Seren's face lightens up at my notion. Who? Follow me. Even still surprised, Seren quickly trails after me as we make our way to Neri's quarters. I guess we take a whole week to get to his quarters. <laughs> right, we seriously need to do intelligence. And for now, I'm going to actually just work on that. Only. Because it's apparently necessary. And his wood or light needs to be... Oh, we're, we're good, we're good. <laughs> we're fine. Aurelia seems hard. Whatever. Alright, so... I guess we never find out what happened to Nazir? I don't know. Um, right, we're continuing with this so that we can get hella intelligence. Uh, but I will be... I will be back when I have got the stats I desire. It's just too cumbersome. This will do. <laughs> this will do. Another morning, another visit to pay to Beringer. Another hot roll. While on my way to Beringer's ward, I spot Neri walking in my direction, poker-faced as usual, but an empty basket filled with crumbs swinging in his hand. Nice basket. Thank you, nice buttered roll. You're off to the garden, I presume, to bed deck that basket of yours with daffodils, honeysuckles, and daisies gay. Not a bad idea, I might just do that. How long has he been caging food off of the both of us, I wonder? Who has? Uh, who has? Don't be coy, Neri. If you're referring to Beringer, he's a growing boy. He needs nutrition. He is an irresistibly adorable kid who has an incurable sweet tooth. That boy was kidnapped and is now in a strange place far from his home. All his friends have been sent away, so I thought maybe he is anxious and lonely. 
with half the palace fussing over him, over, over his every move, Neri allows himself a sheepish grin, and probably bringing food to him too. At least no one can say we don't feed him well. In wordless agreement, we stroll down the corridors together. This feels pleasantly nostalgic, like old times in the High Council again. When are you heading back? There are still a few matters I have to take care of here first. Council business or private? Council, of course. Oh, and I thought you're staying to care for a certain irresistibly adorable kid with an incurable sweet tooth. You're only partially correct. I thought so. I am not here solely because I feel professionally responsible for bearing us welfare. I received an update on the assignment from the council. Another Sval caravan? No, nothing so clear cut. Then what is it? Neri looks around us. It is still early in the morning and the corridor we are in is empty and silent as a graveyard. Politics. Eskian politics? Eskian palace politics. Good heavens, why did they send you? As smart as Neri is, I cannot think of any character less suitable for such bothersome affairs. Because I am already here, apparently. And because they think we work well as a pair. What did they send you for, or haven't I got the clearance to know? They want me to exercise my own judgement, but they also want as few people to be in the know as possible. My lips are sealed. I'm taking charge of the garrison guards here. The investigation, the late king. Neri nods seriously. The council is more interested in this affair than I think you know. A crown in abeyance, a powerful deviant on the run, a master level homunculus of unknown origin, and assassins that might as well have evaporated into the mist. The same thought has been in the back of my mind for some time. There are too many loose ends in this place that do not seem to have answers. So the council is having you launching your own investigation into the previous king's death. That's all I want to say now. There are many things the council suspects but does not know, and I dislike discussing hearsay and guesswork. What about the station the garrison members? They have their own investigation going on. Going nowhere, you mean? I will be taking the lead and have them start from scratch. And they agreed. They don't have a choice. It's been almost two years without the shadow of a lead. Well, as long as you know what you're doing, Neri. You don't have to worry about me, Valky. What about me? You? How can I help? I'm not sure you should be involved in this investigation. That's in my purview, not yours. You're in charge of tutoring the princes. Sure. But I've been here much longer than you, and I know my way around. And we do work well together, as the council knows. I suppose that would make sense. But you're with the alchemists, Valky. No one in the garrison needs to answer to you if they don't want to. Don't they want to, though? Yes, I see your point. You are fairly popular with the garrison, or at any rate, with the cohort stationed here. I don't think they'll mind taking orders from you. You have earned their respect. I'm glad to hear it. In this case, I accept your offer of help. We'll direct the garrison's investigation as a team. We can leave the council's politics to the people at home, and covering and punishing the regicide should be our top priority. I agree. Whether or not the garrison approves of this, I'm glad to have you... Have you... I'm glad to, to, I'm glad you have my back. God, just ax the two. I'm glad you have my back, Valky. Happy to be of service, as always. Ending our discussion on a light-hearted note, I stand up. Well, I'm off to make my pilgrimage to our sweet-toothed charmer in the infirmary. We'll see each other around, I'm sure. We bid each other farewell and continue on our respective ways. More? I stare at the prince sitting before me. He's close enough for me to touch if I just reached out. The lights from the candles flicker brightly, casting a soft orange glow on him. Perhaps reacting to the glare, Saren's eyes are slightly squinted. It gives him an air of casualness and laziness that comes across as intimate in its rarity of appearance. The picture before me can only be described as peaceful and tranquil. Yet a strange restlessness nags at me, and I find myself shifting in my chair for the thousandth time this evening. I can't help but be acutely aware of the time of the day, and the fact that we are in his room alone. Although I have nobody to blame but myself. When Saren requested with help with his research materials, we had originally scheduled to meet in his room earlier in the day. Alas, I found myself caught up in other affairs until now. I mentally berate myself for my uncharacteristic reactions, even as I fail to resist shuffling in my, again in my seat. Is everything alright, Valky? Of course, why wouldn't it be... I let out a high-pitched titter that betrays my nervousness. 
Hmm. Saren lets out a hum that speaks of his doubt, an oddly bright glint in his eyes, but he doesn't push the matter further. He returns to his research. I know I should inch closer to read what he is studying, but even more than before, I am aware of our close proximity. Does it look very odd? Huh? Jerking back into reality, I shift my gaze to look at Saren. He gazes at me with a hint of amusement as he reaches up and touches the scar above his eye gently. Should I let my bangs grow out more to hide it? It is then that I realize I've been staring into empty space while my mind was a million miles away. Most unfortunately, the direction I was blankly looking at happened to be the left side of Saren's head. Oh, no, it looks fine. In fact, as strange as it sounds, the scar actually looks quite handsome on him. It adds, an myster it adds a mysterious air to the prince that only makes him even more appealing to me. Of course, I can only keep that opinion to myself. A twinkle enters Saren's eyes. I almost swear he read the thought I didn't voice aloud. Out of the corner of my eye, I notice a flash of movement. My breath catches. Inch by inch, bit by bit, Saren's right hand draws closer to mine. I'm frozen in place, hardly able to name the emotions coursing through my veins. Nervousness, anxiety, but most of all, anticipation. He stops when there is barely any space left between our fingertips. He glances at me, as though silently asking for permission to continue. I don't move. Taking this as encouragement, Saren finally closes the distance and gently presses the tips of his fingers against mine. Then he grows bolder, sliding forward to intertwine our fingers together. He gently strokes over my palm, sometimes dipping lower to caress the inside of my wrist, tracing over my pulse. The action is so intimate it leaves me with a shudder and my skin burning hot. I'm glad it does not bother you, but I still want to know. Would you like to see me with longer hair instead? I would like to look the best I can to you. Oh, is he so freaking cute? <laughs> I'm dying. Letting out a shaky breath, I somehow drag my eyes away from our interlocked hands and look up to meet his gaze. I am curious, but it does not matter much either way. I like you as you are, and I always like the way you look. A brilliant smile appears, completely lighting up his face. I can't help but return it, grinning like a fool at him. And there we are, uh, and there we remain, sitting together with our hands joined, unwilling to pull away from the touch. Our new position proves to make our work rather difficult, but I don't think either Saren or I quite care. For once, we decide to let, let work wait on the sidelines while we indulge in each other's company and the joy of just being together. <gasps> so cute! I wanna die! It's so cute! After everything, I can no longer ignore how our relationship has gradually become something more! Oh! Okay, <laughs> I'm excited. How is my intelligence? Alright, it's not good enough, so we'll do one more. It does- I don't think it matters. I think we just need 170. I have a lot of coins that I don't even need. What achievement am I unlocking? I wish it would tell me. Uh, Neri and I are rummaging around in the study of the late king, preserved in an immaculate state by the palace guards after his death. The two soldiers who had signed us in were part of the long succession that had guarded its doors against intruders since the night the king was murdered. Theoretically, whatever evidence that may have been left behind on that day should still remain here, as no one had been given permission to remove anything from this room. Theoretically. You have doubts? I have suspicions. If the assassins who were after you can infiltrate the palace guards, why couldn't they have infiltrated those pair outside? But the regicide happened long before the mind-controlling deviant made his appearance. You don't think the two are related? I can't say. Before knowing all facts, it's dangerous to make assumptions. Alright, then tell me the facts. Neri walks to the centre of the room. He gestures at a chair slightly askew before a large desk, stained with sinister patches of dark brown. They found the body here. Must have been lots of blood. Cause of death is magic. Internal organs were destroyed beyond recognition. His body was found by the homunculus the morning after his death. Sala? Yes. What about his guards? Dismissed on the night of the murder. What? Why? Heaven knows. This isn't my line of work. What do you want me to do, Neri? I didn't bring you here as a detective. Dozens of those had gone through the same ground without any breakthrough. I brought you here as an alchemist and a Rosencruz. Take a look around. Nodding, I do as he suggested. As Neri said, everything in this room had been investigated hundreds of times by professional detectives and guards before us. But I suspect Neri believes there are items whose true significance wasn't recognised by them. You search the bookshelves, I'll handle the desk. Okay. 
A few quills and an ink pot stand on the desk over an old, faded parchment. Evidently, the king had been writing on the night of his murder. The words on the parchment are still legible. A proposed revision of Eskia's tax code. The last few letters disintegrate into a chaotic scroll, presumably when the assassin struck. Nothing else of note is on the desk. I move on to the desk drawers. The top drawer le yields several books. Most of them are related to the established forms of the taxation prevailing in es Eskia. There are also a few notebooks elegantly bound in leather. Taking them up one after another, I flip through them idly. On the pages, the king had kept the records of his weekly appointments, conversations with his officials, all except for one. One of the notebooks is blank, not a word has been written on it, and its pages are as que creamy white as the day it was made. Found anything? Have a look at this. Neri ambles over behind me. Ah, that, the old blank notebook the king hadn't gotten around to using. No, the new blank notebook. See these pages? They're white. Ought to have yellowed slightly like the rest of the papers here. Curious. Invisible ink, perhaps? Too obvious, I'm afraid. Our garrison investigators had inundated every inch of that book with invisible ink detectors several times. No trace of writing had been found on any. Still, Neri, something about this book feels off to me. To me also, but if it is keeping a secret, I haven't been able to make it talk. Neri and I spend the next hour puzzling over the notebook. We methodically work our way through different combinations of the ciphering tricks. Neither of us was much surprised when none of them yielded any results. Too bad. I suppose it is difficult to imagine the king as a juvenile delinquent in a high council class, of the sort I once was. Smuggling scraps of paper with magically concealed scribblings, under the noses of overbearing lecturers. Neri frowns at me, no doubt conjuring the image of my past mischiefs and is cleaning after me. It feels so... N for it feels so nostalgic, I cannot help but want to laugh. Nostalgic. Hang on. Neri freezes in the act of stowing away the notebook. What is it? Do you remember the Rosencruz cipher? How can I not? It's the last cipher none of the, te none of the teachers managed to crack. But in the end, it's too impractical to be useful. You enciphered the message using all six elements of magic. Only a Rosencruz can de decode it solo. Not my fault that's how the cipher works. I didn't invent it, you know. Didn't you? I always thought you had. No, my father taught me. He said it was a Rosencruz tradition. My family is not especially keen on being monitored by authority. You reckon? He gestures at the notebook he is holding. That it's worth a try, don't you? It's the last cipher trick in your arsenal. Give it a shot. He tosses the book over. I catch it and spread it open on the desk. Here goes. Taking a deep breath and ignoring the pinpricks of fire that stabbed my neck, I blast the notebook with all six elements of magic at once. Nothing happens. Would have been to... Before I can finish my words, faint letters appear on the pages. I can't believe it. Faster and faster, words and sentences resurface, as though dredged out of some great distance across time and space, scrawling until they fill in nearly the entire page. Both Neri and I stare at the book incredulously. How was this book encoded by the Rosencruz cipher? Don't know. Let's say, let's not jump to conclusions. In any case, avoid making the wrong conjecture. Sure. The book, what does it say? You read it. Looks like alchemical formulae. Let me see. Grasping at the book, I read it hungrily. Many of the writings are too advanced for me to understand. No doubt this book was written by an alchemist with more experience than me. I flip over the pages and freeze when I find a drawing on one of them. This drawing here, isn't it your maidservant? Sala. Quite an accurate depiction of her, don't you say? Strikingly lifelike. What does it say? To give the homunculus a pleasing appearance, it is best to furnish it with a familiar shape, preferably one dear and intimate to the creator, a mother, a wife, a daughter. It deals with the creation of homunculi. You know, when I first met Sala, I wondered who the genius alchemist was that had crafted a homunculus as perfect as her. Whoever it is, it must be the true owner of this book. And whoever it is, they must have had some connection with the late king, if he is holding on to this tome. That means we need her questioned. She has been avoiding the topic of her creator ever since I met her. What of the princes, the Lord Regent? They do not know. 
It seems only one person can answer our question, then. Guards! The two soldiers enter, and Neri waves aside their salutes. The royal tutor wants you to find her servant, Sala. Find her and escort her to my study, please. Tell her I have an urgent request and I wish to help her that I wish to help her that I wish her to help me with. The guards salute once more, leaving swiftly. Neri, I don't want this to be an interrogation. Sala isn't just my servant, she's been taking good care of me for the past year. I understand. Do you want to talk to her alone? No, join us, but let me talk to her first. Sure. Lounging on the stairs in my study, Neri and I wait. Every now and then, footsteps echo outside the door. Each time, we would sit up in anticipation, only to be disappointed by the announcement from the garrison messenger that Sala still has not been found. Odd. Sala normally is at my beck and call. When's the last time you saw her? Just this morning. Minutes trickle away into hours. Where could she be? To leave without further notice is absolutely unlike her. Perhaps she went out of the palace only for tonight. I hope so. Still, I cannot help but worry. Hours lumber one after another away, and the night takes on the first hues of dawn. And still no news of Sala. Master De Veris. Tired, swaying, and dazed with sleep, the captain of the garrison is making his last report of the day to his overseer. Let me guess, you didn't find her. I apologize, sir. We failed. Don't worry, her disappearance caught us all off guard. Have your men dispatched around the capital to widen the search. At once, sir. Bowing stiffly, the garrison captain spins around, barking orders at his men even before he has left the room. Long day ahead. Good luck, Neri. I pray that you can find her. With a stern nod, he leaves my study. My heart filled with worry, I stumble to my bedchambers, hoping to catch a few hours of sleep before resuming the day's schedule. I drop limply on its divinely soft mattress. My eyelids, heavier than lead, droop irresistibly downward, Darkness rushes to embrace me. All right. Well, our intelligence is more than adequate. And you guys are fine too. So maybe I should do a mission. I'll do... No, I won't because it uses etiquette. Save Quill. <gasps> what? Start. What the fuck? <laughs> I didn't know that was a mission. Neither Saren nor I possess enough power to save Quill at the moment, but there was one person that could. Neri. Uh, that's not what I wanted to do. When we arrived at Neri's quarters, he was commanding the stationed garrison guards to take care of the remaining slaves they managed to save that night, including Quill's little sister. Despite being deadpanned as ever, I could tell Neri was glad to see me awake and alive. After the garrison got dismissed, I entered his chambers together with Saren and we explained the current situation. Saren could not pardon Quill without risking an internal political dispute, while my position was nowhere high enough to help. Oop. So I gave a suggestion. If Neri took the responsibility for letting the Sval escape during the, his mission, the blame of the Sval threatening Quill and me and Saren as a result would fall on him. With that, he could take the Sval and Quill to the council and decide on their punishment. And if nothing else, the council will not give an unjust an unjust judgment. Neri agreed. What? You need leadership? But that's not a thing! That's not a thing that I should need! That's not a thing that I should need! That's annoying. I hope it actually doesn't ruin anything. After an afternoon of painstaking negotiations, ones that gave the Eskian nobility many benefits on the council's account. Okay, so that's fine. Whatever. They turned the prisoners over to us. Naturally, the incident dealt a severe blow to Neri's reputation, and the approval of the stationed garrison guards plummeted. Eek. But for all the years I have known him, I was convinced Neri would do it again without a second thought. And watching the tearful reunion of Quill and his sister, I thought the same. After kneeling to both me and Saren for hours crying, we finally managed to convince Quill that he was not to blame. In the next morning, Neri sent both Quill and his sister with a few garrison guards to the council. The brilliant smile I saw on their faces will forever remain in my memory. Still no news of Sala? None, your highness. We've scoured the palace and all Foss tracks, but there's not a sign of her to be found. That means you're looking in the wrong places. This afternoon, my study is playing host to another tense conference between the princes and the garrison. Perhaps some would find it odd to make such a big deal out of the disappearance of a servant, yet Sala is more than just that. She's an old companion of the late king, 
the Lord Regent and Garion. She is also the one who raised the princes after the late Queen passed, and even more, she might be the one holding the answers to the late King's assassination. I believe we should expand the search beyond Fostrax. Sala is very unlikely to be here. Why so, Your Highness? My brother is right. If Sala is in Fostrax, we should have at least rumours of her sightings by now. Fostrax is not so large a city that one can simply vanish into thin air. She is not here. Your Highness, we haven't, had, we haven't the manpower to comb all of Eskia. But we have the manpower to comb some parts of Eskia. What does the Commandant think? Neri, who, like me, had not opened his mouth for the whole of the meeting, looks vaguely distracted as he speaks. I agree with your strategy, Your Highness. We should extend the search, the search beyond the capital. I am happy to offer the men under my personal command to help. You are very kind. We are indebted to the Council for your assistance. I and my men are pleased to be of use. That's settled. Garion, I want you to activate our soldiers, the major towns, to hunt. I want you to activate our soldiers in the major towns to hunt for Sala. You will personally lead the cohort of guards. Yes, Your Highness. Aurelius and I will continue the search here in the palace. The captain will attend to our security in the meantime. Yes, Your Highness. Commandant Devaris, I will not presume to command you, but if there is any location in particular you wish to search. Your Highness, I do not dream of seizing the duties of your guards. While your soldiers keep watch over the main roads, my men and I will poke around at the obscure corners of your kingdom. Good, our forces shall complement each other. As practicable as a plan as any, let us put it into action. Seren rises, which is a sign for us all to. Meeting dismissed. With the conference over, everyone is filling out of my study. Neri is the last to exit. In a nonchalantly casual tone, I call to him. Neri, can I have a word? Is it important? I'd say so. It won't take long. Fine. Neri turns back and returns to his seat. What is it? That's what I should be asking you. How did you know? I was watching you the whole time. Your Highness, I do not dream of seizing the duties of your guards. It is only courtesy. The Lord Marshal must not feel he and his soldiers are being slighted. It is also convenient. Why are you so eager to put your men under the Crown's disposal the moment Aurelius brought up searching outside Fostrax? The High Council guards its forces. Our superiors would never let their people serve others so easily. Neri sighs and makes a small gesture of surrender. Can't hide anything... Can't hide anything from you, can I? We know each other too well. Remember the notebook? Of course, I deciphered it, you know. Well, I've been reading, reading and rereading the past week, and I spotted a code within the message. More cloak and dagger stuff. You better tell me. You already know. You've used it countless times to smuggle out forbidden council gossip in your letters to me. Read only the first letter in the sentence of every chapter. Here, you can do it yourself. He tosses over the notebook to me. A little irritated the idea had not occurred to me, I take it and proceed as he suggested. Regarding the creation... R... R... Frozen... Neri, you're a genius. No, just morbidly obsessed. I thought if the owner of the book wa knows one Rosencruz student ciphering trick, why shouldn't he know others? Rosen... no. That's a name. Of a little hamlet nestled between a fork in the river. Oh, at the very borders of Eskia. It can't be a coincidence. But what's the significance? I suspect it is where Sala was created. The first sentence of the book reads regarding the creation of a perfect homunculus, all my knowledge and all my labor may be found herein. Knowledge and labor, Valky. In the book, knowledge, yes, but labor? You may be onto something. If so, I hope I find it. We look at each other for a moment. Neri looks as excited as I feel. When are you leaving? Early tomorrow morning. I'm taking five garrison soldiers with me. We only have six horses capable of cantering at the speed I intend to make. That means you're wrong. You're taking four garrison soldiers. What do you- Oh. I was afraid you'd ask. No, Balki, you're not coming with me. But you may need me. What if there are more ciphers and clues that only Rosencruz can solve? All of my soldiers are magic users, my dear friend. Not strong enough to be mages, but they all have the gift, and between them, they can all use six elements of magic. Besides, I'm involving you too much already. The High Council's instructions were clear, to keep you at your tutoring job and me hunting for the regicidal assassins. I don't want to get in trouble with the powers while making my after-mission report. 
Very well. I shall respect your veto and remain here. Good luck on your quest to Rosano. No. Neri. To a joyous venture and a happy end. That was the phrase I'd like to tell him just before getting into some particularly res risky escapade that lands me in more than the usual trouble. Even though I smile, I cannot shake off a sense of foreboding as I wave him farewell. Rosano. What? We have like two weeks left. I'm so confused. There's not really much left to do. Again, this is etiquette. I just don't have much etiquette. I don't think, anyway. Yeah, I have 77 etiquette and I don't know how much I would possibly need. I mean, the one I just have flaked on the most is leadership. But yeah. Well, I guess we'll just do a, a lecture. While strolling along the corridor, I hear two maids walking ahead of me gossiping lively. It's an atrocity! The amount of work they're making us do! Bannisters this, tapestries that, carpet washed and darned and beaten until my arms are sore all over. These are for the Crown Prince's coronation, so sh show some respect, Alyssa. Ha, huh, simply because you have an unrequited crush on your dreamy fairy tale prince. I do not. I revere the good Prince Seren just as any loyal subject ought. Don't play hoity-toity with me. I know you used to stalk him up and down the palace all day and squealing about him in the laundry room afterwards. Hush your voice, Alyssa. Someone might overhear and misunderstand. Overhear, sure, but misunderstand? They turn into an alcove and climb up its staircase, their bickering voices gradually fading away. Seren's coronation. I can hardly believe how quickly the days have flown by. It feels like it was only yesterday when I made my first appearance in Fostrax after having escaped from the ambush of assassins and meeting my three loyal royal charges who saved me and my dignity from the snobbish royal guard who surprisingly turned out quite decent later on. Somehow, those memories seem to me as if they belonged to someone else, younger, brasher and more headstrong and perhaps less wise, someone whom, after all I had been through, I barely recognised as myself. Pondering over those thoughts, I continue on my way. What in the world is causing the dreadful ruckus outside? And we will find that out in the next video. Bye.